everyone I ever have this conversation with has like their own version of it. And right. we just have spent our whole lives not recognizing that we're all going through these things at different times. And like the relief I feel when I can connect with someone and realize that I'm not alone, it is like one of the, the biggest gifts, I think. I'm Sarah Hicks, principal conductor of Live at Orchestra Hall with the Minnesota Orchestra. Anxiety has been with me for most of my life. Making music with others has been foundational in helping me feel grounded and whole. This is music and healing. Our friend and collaborator, Laserbeak, is a musician, producer, and manager. A father of three young kids, Laserbeak talks about his mental health struggles and mindfulness journey. Here is my conversation with Laserbeak. What is Doomtree for those who don't know? Yes, great question. Um, it's a lot of things. And it, it's been a lot of different things over the last two decades, but essentially it's, it's a, a rap crew. We're also seven solo artists. We're a record label. We just exist almost as a way to support one another's creative endeavors and dreams. You wear so many hats, which is amazing and fulfilling, but it's also got to be really stressful. So can you kind of talk to stress yeah. and anxiety, how yeah. it's a part of what you do and so your experience with that? Yeah. I started out really just wanting to, to write music, release music. And, and so with Doomtree, we started out as just a crew of like-minded friends who were kind of learning how to create music together. And then coming up in, in Minnesota, there's not a ton of infrastructure. So, oh, there's no label that'll put out our album. I guess we have to, I guess we are the label. Mm -hmm. So we start a label and then we figure out how to, how to press CDs back in the day and like figure out how to book the shows and all that. And every time there was a new thing or a new hurdle, I just was so excited that I would raise my hand and say like, no idea, but I'll, I'll try to figure that mm -hmm. out. And then as we're slowly getting more success, you know, there's, there's constantly more things that are coming up. We were putting on this huge festival that we called the Doomtree Zoo. It was in the St. Paul Saint Stadium. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of bit off more than I could chew. And it was nine months of like combination of no sleep and just like the load piling up. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know what I was experiencing. Like I wasn't sleeping and I knew that I was feeling like my body felt like it was on fire. Um, and I just didn't, I felt like a kind of a shell of myself. I couldn't focus. I was, I was losing sensation in my limbs. Like, um, and I was freaking out and, and, you know, we got through the show and I thought everything would, would go back to normal when the show was over and it didn't. Mm -hmm. I still experienced those feelings and I finally went and talked to my doctor and God bless her. She was just like, okay. She talked to me about like, you know, as humans, like we're, we're good at dealing with a lot of stress. It's actually kind of healthy to have a mm -hmm. decent amount of stress and we can, we can handle it. Um, but if it's like a roller coaster, we want to be like right here before the top. And she's like, and you just kind of went here. <laughs> so we got to bring you back over here. Uh -huh. And I just remember like crying, of course, and yeah. being like, I, I, no one had ever explained it to me. And she's like, you're dealing with extreme anxiety. Um, and so I had, uh, that was like this breakthrough moment. That was about probably seven years ago. And a combination of getting on some kind of low dose anti-anxiety medication and then also for the first time kind of exploring mindfulness. And for me, it was meditation that, that was like life changing, I guess, started me on my mindfulness journey. The first time I sat down and did it for 10 minutes, I just like felt like I can imagine what people who are maybe like born again religiously feel that kind of just like, whoa, mm -hmm. moment, eureka moment. It just like, it centered me and it, it, it was like a whole new world and I've just kind of been hooked ever since. I think meditation looks different for all people, but taking that time out to check in with yourself and to just kind of pull yourself out of the like hustle and bustle of our insane lives. Every single one of us have insane lives right now. And just to like reconnect with yourself is I think the goal. Yeah. I practice Vipassana meditation, which is yeah. insight meditation, which I think is really similar yeah. to what you do. So what's your yeah. mindfulness meditative I, process? I use this Headspace app, which a lot of people use. It's on my phone and it's really easy and it's only 10 minutes. And, um, you know, it's I've been able now to set it up. So it is a part of my daily routine, 10 minutes in the morning. And it's it really is just listening to a guided meditation, taking a break before I, I dive into the, the work day and, and honestly like taking a breath and 
checking in with myself, both, you know, physically, there's a body scan that I do where it's like, okay. And it's amazing. You'll be like, oh yeah, my left shoulder is really sore. What's that all about? So it just kind of like stops you. Uh, for me, it allows me to like plug in and actually take stock of, of what's going on in my mind and my body. And by doing that, I'm a lot more aware of like, oh, I'm actually kind of grumpy or like, you know, oh, I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling really awesome. And that like knowledge, it helps me plug in. And that's been really, really helpful. Um, and I found that when I do it consistently, I just feel better. It's the same way that when I do, you know, when I get on the exercise bike in the morning, I do feel better. Even if like while I'm doing it, I'm like, you know, like uh, I, I feel better the same way that I feel better when I when I eat vegetables and go to bed before midnight. Right. And so I try to do that in the morning. And then the other thing, the, the simplest mindfulness technique that I've explored is just, I have this app again, cause it's easy and it pings me every night, but it's a gratitude journal essentially. And I just go in and type three things that, that I'm grateful for or thankful for or that, that are positive. And they don't have to be earth shattering, like, you know, oh, I'm grateful for radical acceptance and the air we <laughs> breathe. And, you know, it's not like, it's literally like, you know, the apple pie slice at McDonald's and this like dumb comedy show that I, or whatever, like, you know, it's, it's whatever that comes to my head in that moment. So a lot of times it's pizza. I don't know why, but I was like <laughs> really thankful for pizza mostly. Uh, I think we all are. We are, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How about you? I want to know about. <laughs> I want to know about. I'm going to flip it on you, Sarah. Oh, no. Tell me about your practice because we've also kind of been walking side to side in this like journey. Yeah, I feel it's like. true. I started, I guess, the serious study of Vipassana maybe in 2008 or nine. So it's been yeah. a slightly longer journey, but I think those journeys aren't linear in a way. And I find myself as busy people do. Speaking of, yeah. oh, I don't have time for it. Yeah, feeling like that happens even now, even though it's part of, I think integrated into me and my practice as yeah. part of my life, I will not be able to do it for days on end just because they're, it feels like they're time constraints. Yeah. But I love this idea that it's like the, the gratitude journal, you're actually creating like a neural groove, yes. right? And all of it, cause we have these maladaptive neural grooves, which like lead us down the wrong path okay. that we establish because of the past or trauma or just yeah. behavior or not knowing how to cope with stress. Yeah. But we're creating the, the ones that lead us down the, the good, good path, right? And so meditation is that. And once you establish a practice, I've discovered that even if I step away from it for whatever reason, I just need to rediscover that groove that I spent yeah. so much time creating and I can like, easily slide back into that. I've always been known for making what I call lava bangers, which are just mm -hmm. like everything in the kitchen sink, you know, just like make you scrunch your face up and bang your head <laughs> type music. Um, and that's what people had come to know me for. And I was like, I love doing this, but how do I like try to express musically the like the sense of peace that I'm feeling from kind of this, the beginning of this new lifestyle. And I kind of set out to create an album that would be almost be the 180 of what I've always done in the past. And it was so rewarding because I didn't know what I was doing. I'm used to making really fast, hard, short songs. And now I was making slow, long, gentle songs. And I had such an amazing time doing it that I ended up turning it into a trilogy because it was also meditative for me to create the music mm -hmm. and sit in that, that place of peace. And so I ended up making an album for each of my three kids, wow. which they don't care about at all right now, but someday but I'm gonna cash will. in my, so my cool points. That. It was such a amazing moment in my life because I was able to tie in music, which has been with me from the start. And then this new passion of mine, which is mindfulness and the things we talk about, you know, like mental health and, and the music, a lot, gave me a talking, you know, a platform to talk mm -hmm. about it. So when I would go do interviews, now all of a sudden I'm on rap radio with like some tough guys about about meditation or mm -hmm. about like feeling anxiety. And, you know, we always talk about how music can connect people probably better than anything else. And here it was again, doing like the heavy lifting for me to get me in the room to have the conversations. Um, and I've just found that so powerful. So that's one of the biggest moments in my life was, was releasing those albums and just being able to, to tie in my journey with my musical journey. Be a part of Music and Healing. Engage in our collection of conversations and share your feedback at minnesotaorchestra.org slash healing.